this is a young patient uh, uh, who is having a left upper urotric stone of around 2.3 cm in size uh, and the patient is already on a left sided digestant. In view of the large size of the stone, we have planned for left sided mini PCNL in the given case. So this is the intra fluoroscopy image, you can see the stone there which is around 2.3 cm in size located at the level of the PUJ. So we are placing the ureteric catheter initially over a guide wire that was shown here. And after that you can see this is the, the patient is turned into prone position since we have planned prone PCNL. Uh, you can see the intraop retrograde pilogram where you can see the dilated pelvis on the upper ureter with the stone. So in this, uh, after injecting the contrast, so we generally always identify the posterior calyx. So the how to identify posterior calyx, we always inject air, like you can see in the image now, after injecting air, uh, we will be able to identify the posterior calyx. So I am doing the fluoro in moving it from 0 to 30 degree, where you can see the, the one which I am pointing with the needle, see that's the posterior calyx. You can clearly see in 0 it is lateral, whereas when I am doing 30, the calyx is moving medially. So that will suggest that the calyx which you are pointing is the posterior calyx. So we conventionally always do a bullseye puncture, like I am putting the needle here there. So I am assessing the depth again in 0 and then again I am aligning the needle in 30 degree so that it comes into a bullseye location. So you see I am just putting the needle there. So slowly I will be advancing the needle further. You can see I have told my assistant to inject the contrast again so that that light area calyx can be seen clearly. So you can clearly see the area. Now I am passing the needle into the calyx. And once you enter, you get a giveaway feeling there. So I am just passing the needle in 30 degree again and again, slowly. So using an artery, you can reduce the exposure to your hands. So I am just passing the needle there. So you can see the needle just entered the calyx there. So in 0 degree, you can see the depth. The needle is actually in the calyx now. Now confirm your position by checking whether saline is coming. So my assistant is injecting saline from below. You can see free flow of saline coming out. Now I will be passing a guide wire into the system. So you can see the initially the guide wire coil in the pelvis. You can see the stone also moving inside. So always I try to pass the guide wire in such a way that the guide wire goes into the ureter because you should make a genuine attempt for that. So in this I am just now fiddling with the guide wire trying to negotiate it into the ureter. Now you can see it has gone into the ureter after manipulation. So and many a times I try to pull the guide wire and keep it straight like which I am doing now. See I just pulled it out. Now your track is straight now into the upper ureter. Now the next step would be serial dilatations which I will be showing. So initially I first mm, passed an 8 French dilator but on the surface of the kidney you see there is some amount of buckling which was occurring. So when this happens it is not advisable to push it further with always you can the tips to overcome this step is either you can put a stiffer guide wire or you can use a smaller uh, dilator and then gradually start increasing the size of the dilator. So I have again changed out to a 6 French dilator. You can see this time it has gone into the kidney. So sometimes in a hurry people try to uh, pass a bigger dilator then that will lead to difficulty. So after this I am exchanging it with an 8 French dilator. You can see with rotatory movement it is actually entered into the kidney. Now this completes the 
initial dilatation now i am passing the alken cannula so whenever i am passing a rigid alken cannula i always try to do it in 30 degree to understand the axis of the guide wire and then over that i negotiate the cannula inside now the depth is assessed by seeing in 0 degree so you can see the tip of the alken cannula almost reached the pelvis so my assistant is injecting contrast so that i always try to keep the dilator just in the calyx but in this case yes it is put inside the pelvis there now the outer cannula also is passed inside and the in the alken cannula was removed so always confirm again whether free flow of saline is coming or not so when free flow of saline is coming here which suggests that you are in the right place now the next step is using a single step dilator of the uh, stores mipm system so i am just negotiating the the single step dilator into the pelvis of course you can directly use this dilator from the beginning itself but generally it's my routine practice to try to dilate it with smaller dilators and then go for this so that's how i do it now you can see the outer cannula of the also is uh, is placed the amplage sheath was placed now i am showing the endoscopy view see this is the uh, endoscopy view view after dilatation so how to know whether the puncture is good or not so in this you can see the infundibulum in front of you whenever you see the infundibulum in front of you that suggests that you have gone through the papilla so there is no major injury there you can clearly see in the see the stone in the pelvis and the ureter catheter there so posterior calcial puncture gives straight access like this always you will be in a comfortable position now we are using holmium yag laser in this case with a setting of 1 joule and 12 hertz frequency in, in uh, the dusting mode in the setting in the machine the stone is ablated so this is a 2.3 cm uh, stone and uh, we took almost around 15 minutes for completely ablating this stone this is the final endoscopy view you can see complete stone clearance the track looks okay without any significant bleeding and uh, this is the final x-ray picture showing complete stone clearance tubeless pnl with uh, dressing was done here